HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. As you probably already know, Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks. They've got thousands of titles of audiobooks, but you may not know that they have a lot of other audio products available to all of you. So we're going to offer you a free trial if you go to audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. And you know what? Get that free trial and look around because uh, I think you're going to find things you weren't expecting and I think you're going to find an awful lot that you enjoy. Over the years, this podcast has continued to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, uh, business leaders, entrepreneurs. And that is because of the guests. Uh, These are folks who have expertise in a particular area of business, and they join me to share that expertise with all of you. Because the goal is that we get the answers we need so we can do better things in our business. And today is no different. Uh, My guest today is Ben Kruger. Ben is the podcast educator, founder, and CEO of Cashflow Podcasting. And he's dedicated to helping industry advocates start, launch, and grow world-class podcasts for their businesses. He believes podcasting is one of the best tools to help leaders reach more people, connect more deeply, and make an impact because it allows them to educate, motivate, and advocate at scale like nothing else. Ben has had the privilege of collaborating on hundreds of podcasts since 2012 applying his podcast principles and service systems to help clients easily host shows that make a deep impact while reaching millions. 
In today's conversation with Ben, we are going to dive into some exciting topics around podcasting, fundamental principles of business and how to plan, start, and grow a podcast that generates amazing business results using those eight podcast principles. Thanks for joining me today, Ben. Hey, Diane, I am tickled to be here. Always love talking podcasting shop and, and digging in. So excited to be connecting here with you and your listeners. Right on. And I am excited to have you here because, you know, podcasting is obviously one of my favorite things, uh, but it feels like it is, it is something that a lot of people have questions about. Um, and, and I have a question for you, which is, why, why do you think now is you know such an incredible time to use podcasting to be a leader in you know whatever industry someone is in yeah and i i love starting with this question because um i'm i am of the opinion that podcasting is just a communication channel and medium um there's video there's podcasting there's blogging there's email there's social there's various forms and and um, podcasting is, has its own natural strengths and it has its own natural weaknesses when you compare it to the natural strengths and weaknesses of the other platforms and mediums. So um, I see podcasting being particularly important and relevant now um, because we're in this phase to where um, in-person and live events are a little bit thrown into question from, from COVID and from um, you know, a lot of companies are now having their workforces working from home, um, and there's much more of a distributed, um, more digital interaction format going on right now. Um, and part of the challenge here is it's just a time of uncertainty. People are looking for leadership. They're looking for connection. They're looking for information and guidance now more than ever. Um, they're working from home. They're not attending live events and conferences and some of those things that they're used to in their business schedules. Um, and so podcasting allows for someone to be a leader, to educate, to advocate, to uh, essentially create content and create a valuable resource for their audience, for their industry. Um, and they can do it from home. So it's got, you know, social distancing built right into it. <laughs> Um, but I think, I think that's a, a pretty important piece at the moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sure is. Wow, that's really interesting. So, okay, so why aren't people starting podcasts? Like, what is stopping them? Yeah, so this is a great question as well. And what I, what I find, you know, especially for business owners, entrepreneurs, you know, folks who are those, those driven types who... Um, you know, they, they want to do things right. And what I found is that ends up being the piece that stops folks from actually starting a podcast, that, that wanting to do it right. And it, this is a double-edged sword here because this is, the, this is part of what has helped them be successful in other areas. Um, and podcasting is no different. The, the thing is you want to go into it and do it right. Um, but the thing that that then holds folks back is it, it tends to fall into one of three categories. It's I don't have the time, I'm intimidated by the tech or the process, and I want it to make sure that it's set up right to succeed and do well. Like I don't want to put in all this work and then only my you know mom and her quilting guild listen to it. Um, <laughs> and so the this this desire to do it right is great um, because that means that when you do actually start getting the, the ball into motion, um, you'll spend the time and energy on making sure that it's done well. Um, but it's also the same reason why a lot of people don't get started because it's that thing that can be started on next month or it's that thing that can be pushed down the to-do list a little while longer when there's the fires of the day to put out. So I'm a big believer in, you know, a lot of folks don't have the time. A lot of folks are a little bit intimidated by the tech and the process and they want it to succeed. So um, there's a few approaches that can help folks get past some of those sticky points 
Um, and my assumption, Diane, is that uh, that's where we're heading with this conversation. <laughs> Excellent, because it is. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> uh, so pick beautiful, one beautiful. and... <laughs> tell, so, tell about the tech, or, or unless that's not the one you want to start with, but I do think that is something that people feel like is overwhelming and there's so much to learn and they don't have time to learn it, that then they don't yes. do it. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, generally, uh, especially if you're podcasting for business, um, you, you are generally a, a business person, an entrepreneur, a salesperson, a leader first, and a podcaster second, if you even identify as a podcaster when, when putting together a show. It's not the only thing that you're doing. And a lot of times it's a vehicle to allow you to do what your your primary focus is better or get better results with you know your primary business or or organization so right. um what i find you know when it comes down to it is I, I find there's a few simple things here one is start simple um and make a first pass at it so i realize that you know that that slight perfectionist streak in all of us wants to get it right really well from the start um, but I'm a big believer in start using a simple approach um, and start with a simple recording setup that um, allows you to do it without being intimidated by the tech process. So, you know, for example, today I'm, I'm using a simple um, 70 or $80 microphone that plugs in via USB to my laptop and we're having a Zoom call and we're recording it. Um, Pretty simple setup, and it's an it's a Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred. If somebody's you know really trying to get exactly what mic to go with, but um, from a from a tech standpoint, it can really be that easy to get started. Um, from a time standpoint, I'm a big believer in get help so that you can focus on being the expert, the topic. Um, the, the person that knows about and can educate around the topic or can connect with folks and do interviews um, and essentially add value in the way that you are best suited to and get help in whatever format um, you, you can afford. So if you've got um, a little bit of, of cash that you can put towards a podcast, using a service is going to be really helpful. Um, if you're a little tighter on the cash front, there's a lot of software out there that allows you to do a pretty good job um, on, a, on a pretty tight budget. Um, and that just requires a little bit of extra elbow grease and a little bit of extra time. Um, but from a strategy piece, there's this last piece of like, how do I do it and make sure that it succeeds? Um, that's the piece that I've spent a lot of my time over the years working on figuring out what is it about podcasts that makes some really successful and effective and others, you know, struggle and, and, you know, sometimes fade out or pod fade as, as it's known in the industry. Um, and I, I find that it comes down to a couple of pop, uh, proven principles of what makes business podcasting effective. Um, and following basic concepts and strategies and these principles um, really makes all the difference. So um, there, there's a couple there, there's eight, and I'm sure we're going to dive in and start talking about a few of them. But um, a, a great example of where to start is having clarity from day one about what the actual objectives are for your podcast. Why are you starting a podcast? Um, and what are you hoping to achieve with it? Because you'd be amazed at how many people want to or think about starting a podcast uh, because someone said that they should, or they heard about it at a conference, or they, you know, heard a podcast episode uh, that podcasting is great, and now they're kind of going at it, but they're not really clear where they're going or what the objective is. So I'm a big believer in start with the end in mind, um, and the principles, the rest of the principles build from there. So that makes a ton of sense. And I'm so glad you said that because um, I know my, my viewpoint is if you don't know, then that comes out, right? Like you, it's hard to put messaging around it. It's hard to, um, 
really be able to strategize around what it is that you're going to be talking about or what kind of guests you want to get. If, if it's so broad, it's like any marketing, you know, if it's so broad, no one's going to hear it and, yes. and it's not going to resonate with anybody. Yeah. And what we find works with podcasting is fundamentally the same that works in marketing across any other channel. Um, but almost uh, amplified because podcasting is such a intimate medium, you know, as someone who's listening mm -hmm. to this show, you hear my voice, you hear Diane's voice, you get to hear how we approach the conversation, how we approach business and marketing, and you get a true sense for like, are we here to educate and support and create value for you as the listener? Are we here to try and sell something? Are we here to, right. you know, like what is the, what you kind of see through a little bit more authentically to someone's uh, motivation, their personality, the way they interact with others, the way they address that market and that space. Um, so I think that podcasting particularly needs to come from a place of clarity around what's in it for the, for me as a listener, what's in it for your audience, um, and how can you as a host create a relationship with those folks that's not just you trying to sell them your products and services because uh, that won't get you very far as a podcaster um, because the medium what people look to podcasting for is entertainment, education, and community. Um, and if you are just trying to sell, or if you are um, essentially coming in with no objective, then that comes out in the content, that comes out in how somebody talks, that comes out in the type of topics that are discussed, um, and it doesn't resonate nearly as well uh, with, with the audience. So there's a lot right. that comes out of having clarity of objective. Got it. That, that is so great. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break. And then, so then we can just continue to talk without having to worry about me doing it. Uh, okay. Uh, Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com. Uh, I mentioned it at the beginning of the show that most of you know about audible.com and you know that they have like thousands of titles of audiobooks to choose from, but you probably or possibly do not know that they have other stuff like audible originals and podcasts and guided meditations and so much more. Um, these days, the guided meditations are uh, some of my favorite things about audible.com. Uh, there's just so much to explore and to really see how you can listen on, you know, any platform on, on any device and you can go from one to the other. And anyway, it's just, it's a um, really incredibly valuable uh, program. So uh, sign up for a free trial, check it out for yourself. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to get access to that trial. Today, we're speaking with Ben Kruger about launching and running a successful podcast. Okay, so thank you for that. So, you know, we were talking about having clarity and how important it is to have clarity about what your goals are, but, you know, before you start podcasting. Um, then what? You know, like, what's next? Yeah, great question. So, um it, in terms of these principles, having that clear, clear objective is, is number one. Number two we've found is having a clear audience and, a, and a, a specific audience group in mind that you are creating your podcast for. And I like to think about it as, you know, what group of individuals are you looking to create a community of? Um, and we have found for a lot of businesses, the more specific you can be, the better. Um, and, you know, this different folks talk about this in different ways all the time. You know, the riches are in the niches and that kind of, and that always kind of bugged me and rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> um, but what we find more and more is uh, the clients that we've worked with and the shows that we've worked on that have very clear um, audience groups tend to 
resonate incredibly well and incredibly deeply with their audience. So a great example um, is a show uh, called Dennis Freedom Blueprint. And it is uh, a, one of our clients hosts this show where he helps dental practice owners build long-term wealth through real estate investing. It's insanely specific. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you would almost think with a, with a show like that, where do you even have an audience? Like who are these people and, and how do you even find them? Um, but that's who he works with in, in terms of his, uh, coaching and his programs and his business. And <clears throat> so then the podcast is a natural extension of that. And it's actually almost like, it's almost like the beginning pieces of him working with them because he can help teach them mindsets. He can help them understand the concepts. He can create a bit of a community there. But because he's so specific, if you are a dental practice owner and you are kind of done with this whole stock market thing, you want to maybe exit your practice, but A, you're not sure how much it's worth. You don't want to lose the wealth that you have created. And you actually want to now, you know, create a legacy and have some, some wealth stability for your family. Like there isn't a better show on earth for you. Oh. Like that is the show for you. Um, and an, another great example, um, it's a show hosted by Katrina Ubel, weight loss for busy physicians. It is specifically for women physicians who want to lose weight and, um, and in particular, she helps women change their relationship with their bodies um, and with food um, so that they can actually make lasting change. And it's not just, you know, hitting the gym more, more aggressively per se. It's more, you know, shifting your mindset and relationship with food in your body. But you can, again, see where um, if you are one of those individuals that, that the show is created for, it really lights up. Uh, that that piece of your brain that helps you identify like, yes, this is the resource created specifically for me. And then where the audience growth comes from, because this is the first thing then that, that folks uh, get concerned about, and it's a legitimate <laughs> concern, so let's address it right off the bat, is how do I get listeners to a show that's that specific? Yeah. Um, and what we find is these types of shows grow really well through grassroots um, referrals of your existing listenership, sharing it out through their personal network. So if you're a women physician who's been struggling with their weight, you're at work, there's other women at, you know, nurses and doctors and, you know, folks associated with the medical practice that are in the similar shoes to you. Um, and they mention that they're, you know, trying to get a handle on that, like, it's such an easy, valuable thing, because they are very personally identified um, in the same way that you are. And it's a way that you can actually, as a, as someone, help someone else by connecting them in with this resource versus um, a lot of times other things that people try to use as referrals, like, um, like let's say someone wants to connect you to their financial advisor just straight to connect you to them for a phone call that can almost feel it's it's almost too risky like what's the first thing that you're going to think when they're going to get on the phone is they're going to try to sell you you know um some form of of you know either insurance or financial advisory package um and so that's like a bit of a risky referral whereas if they have a podcast, uh, like one of our clients, where it's a podcast around wealth creation for uh, immigrants, and you are an immigrant that's looking to build wealth, that is a great way to connect someone with a resource to share something valuable with them. Um, and at the same time, you're growing the audience, but because, not because you're blasting it out to essentially anyone who will listen, but because you're using a targeted kind of referral grassroots growth style approach. Um, and that then as well tends to bring highly qualified individuals to the podcast and, and into your community and around the brand. So it's a really nice way of extending 
um, what you do as a company, especially if you provide the most results for a, per a particularly narrow set of people, or you can provide the best results for a particularly narrow set of people and you want to attract more of those folks. Boy, that, that is, those examples are so great about really specific, niche -y. I mean, th those are, and it makes perfect sense to me that the audience would grow through, you know, organically because it's so clear to the person who is listening and likes the podcast, who else it would be valuable to. There's no, that, you know, there's no question. Exactly. There's no, you know, who else would this apply for? Well, of mm -hmm. course, it's going to apply for women physicians who are, you know, right. interested in losing weight. Right. It's right there. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, good. I, I'm, I'm with you so far. I'm, I'm getting this. So what's next? Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and I love how you, you may be able to tell here, but I'm a, big, I'm a big believer in strategy and setting the strong foundation. That's really what these principles are all about. Yeah. Um, some of the technical pieces of what hosting do I use and what microphone do I use and that kind of stuff. Like, there's so much information out there that it's relatively easy to get started on those pieces. And I find the, the, the missing information out there is the strategy piece, the principle, yeah. you know, what actually works piece. Um, and so that's what I try to do a lot of education around. So the next piece that I find um, in, in terms of what works well in, in podcasting is mindset. Um, and we've already touched on this a little bit, but I find that the mindset that works best as a podcast host is you're going into the podcast with the mindset of creating a valuable resource for your listenership and for the industry as a whole. Um, and you are, you can essentially continually check back in with the question, what's in the audience and my industry's best interest. Um, that's something that's top of mind for you. And if you're going in with that mindset, then, um, it's opportunities naturally tend to, you know, come your way as you create and build out the podcast. If you're going into podcasting with the mentality of trying to get something or, you know, it's that mm -hmm. trying to cut a bigger piece of the pie for myself versus helping grow the pie for everybody. Um, I've really found that that mentality shines through and is very obvious um, for podcast listeners. So we're kind of going back to that piece where uh, people can hear your motivation and your intention. So having that proper mindset going in is really important. So a great example of this is um, Michael Kitzes, who is a, is a pretty prominent figure in the financial advisory market. Um, he teaches other financial advisors how to build um, the only practices um, and hmm. on his pod on his about page of his website he he has a little you know on the about Michael Kitts is it talks about uh, I seek to learn about the financial industry and then share what I learn with my audience like it's that's the perfect mentality where you are in it you are curious you are essentially looking to be the advocate for your crew, for your tribe, for your audience, for your industry. Um, and that, that really then starts to attract all of the other pieces. So now that we've got, you know, we, we have clarity on what our objective is, what we're trying to do. We know who our audience is. We're coming in with the right mindset of, you know, serving and, and being in the best interest of our audience and industry. Now we can then talk about some of the more tangible, tangible pieces like our content. You know, how often are we releasing episodes? How do we market and promote our episodes? How do we get people from podcast listener to client or referral partner or, you know, connecting um, us with the speaking opportunities um, and, and general networking within, within the business space. So, um, now that we've got those pieces, then all of the tactical strategies build on top of that. But once 
until we've got those pieces dialed in, then the strategies aren't going to be very helpful because we're just essentially seeing what's working for someone else and trying to copy and paste it for ourselves without having the foundation built of mm -hmm. understanding how that strategy pieces into what we're already doing. Wow. I think that's a biggie. Yeah. And that's where, mm. that's where, you know, if you have tried marketing channels before or you've tried things before because it's working for somebody else and it didn't work very well for you, a lot yeah. of times that's where that comes from. And I'm as guilty of this as anybody else. So I'm not by any means pointing the finger. Um, but I've, we've really found the more we can start with that clarity around objective audience and mindset, then we can actually start mapping out a podcast that will truly support that brand, truly support the message, truly support the audience, um, and help the host actually start achieving results with the show. And one of the things that I, I really like about what you're saying is that it's really, overall, it's about being of value and, and you know, the, the results come later, you know, you get mm -hmm. fed later if you're of value and you're focused on providing value to people as opposed to making money. 100%. And <laughs> I'll be the first to say that, like, I, the, the idea of providing value always felt too vague to me for a long time. Like, I had a hard time of, what does that really mean, boots on the ground? Um, and one thing that, that shifted it for me, and I, you know, this may resonate or may not with, with folks listening, but, um, when I switched it to, to the word contribution, like how can I contribute? Oh. That makes so much more sense to me immediately. Um, is to contribute, you know, I can contribute to someone by listening when they're, when they're having a rough day, I can contribute to somebody by sending them a helpful resource. I can contribute to somebody by teaching them a skill or a concept or a mindset. Um, I can contribute by connecting them with someone else in the industry. There's all these ways that I can contribute, but if I think about it as adding value, I don't know what that means. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I, I've just found personally the idea of contribute and contribution um, makes it easier for me to go in with the right uh, mindset and not just feel like I'm staring at a blank wall of, of like, okay, I got to create value. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. 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 I think you, that makes a lot of sense. I like that word. Yeah. yeah and it's one. kind of that go giver mentality. Uh -huh. um, you're right. You know, if you go in with, if you're going in with a long-term vision and of the, the go-giver mentality or the contribution first model. Um, those are the folks time and time and time again that I've seen end up getting the, the biggest reward and the most effectiveness, uh, the most effective business results out of a podcast versus the folks that go in with trying to monetize from day one. Um, they mm -hmm. tend to struggle. They tend to struggle. Because it's kind of like if you think about um, podcasting, one of the biggest questions that, that we get right off the bat is awesome. We want to start a podcast. How do we monetize it? Um, <laughs> which is a valid question. And the, the short answer is you monetize it by building a community of prospects around your brand and over time educating those folks so that they can become customers and clients down the, mm -hmm. down the road. Um, that's the short answer, really. You can, you can definitely make some money through advertising and sponsorships, but the lion's share of, of, a, of most businesses' podcasts income are going to be through using it as a channel to nurture your existing leads and grow your audience to where they're ready to do business with you, essentially. Um, but as an extension of that same situation, um, if you are going in with the mentality of how do I monetize from day one, uh, it doesn't allow you to have that contribution piece as much. Um, and generally speaking, it's a, it's a shorter mindset, a shorter term mindset. 
Um, so it's something that shines through, tends to shine through in the content in, you know, you as you're interviewing or as you're educating it and talking things through. Um, and so we've just found time and time again that it's not nearly as effective and it's usually not as connected with somebody's passion for what, where they like helping people, where they like serving people and supporting people. It's usually more connected to like survival mode. Um, yeah. you know, gotta, gotta yeah. bring in, you know, gotta hit my quota for the end of this month which there's nothing wrong with that, but it tends not to create a, a snowball of momentum over time. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Ugh. Yeah. 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 Wow. That, I mean, it's just such a good point. Yeah. And so this is where, this is where it gets exciting um, for me in that working with and helping folks who kind of have that long-term vision, that go giver uh, and contribution mindset, Mm -hmm. um, like crafting shows that help them have as big a contribution as they can over time. Um, and with the knowledge and expectation that it's a process, it takes some time. Um, but if you go in with that snowball mentality, um, then it can kind of pick up a momentum of its own, as I'm sure you've noticed with your own show that at this point, it's got a momentum of its own. <laughs> yep. yep, it does. It's so great. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's absolutely true from getting guests to, uh, you know, listeners to, I mean, there's the whole thing. It's just sort of taken on a life of its own. Yeah. And Very then rewarding. there's, you know, some of the side side, these kind of oddball side benefits that you wouldn't expect. Like uh, one of the biggest ones that I hear from clients is when they go to conferences people just walk up to them and start talking to them like they're best buds and they've, they've <laughs> known them for a long time because they've been listening to the podcast for months, if not years. And they, you know, know the person's voice. They know how they talk. They know how they interact with others. Um, they might know quite a bit about their personal lives, depending on what they share in the podcast. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting deal where when someone comes up to you and starts talking to you like they're, they're a good friend and you have no idea who they are. <laughs> I, I do have to say that is sort of a weird thing. Like I try not to think about, okay, like people are really getting to know me because mm -hmm. I think that would probably freak me out. Yep. So, right. And I've had people reach out to me and say, okay, I've been listening to you for years. I, when I walk, I was just like, okay, but I don't make that connection with, and then they really have a good, even though that's part of my goal. Totally. Is, right. That, that they, that they trust me because they've gotten used to how I think and how I motor and all that. But yeah, that, that's a little weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Just like, you know, listening to your own voice in the first few episodes is a little weird. <laughs> Most people are not a fan of their own voice. No. I'm included in that. And yeah. I have just stopped listening to my own episodes <laughs> and interviews because I, you know, I'm not a fan. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Oh my gosh. Okay. And, and then we move on to what would be next? So the, what it comes down to now, if you're thinking about if you're thinking about podcasting, we've talked about objective audience uh, mindset. So now we actually get into planning what your show is going to become, like what the, sh the format of the show is. And so we can talk mm -hmm. about your content. Are we doing interviews or are we doing um, solo episodes where you're teaching? Are we releasing weekly episodes or every other week episodes? Are we, you know, how long should the episodes be? And this is where it's going to depend on you, your situation, your audience, your brand, um, and your general show topic. But most importantly, it's going to depend on what your objective was in the first place. So if you want to, if your objective with the podcast over time is to get more uh, coaching and consulting clients, let's say, then in your content, if you are thinking, all right, do I want to do interviews or do I want to do some teaching? Well, um, what we have found is for kind of that coaching and consulting space, if you do a fair amount of coaching and consulting and teaching through your content, 
it essentially gives people a taste test of what coaching and consulting with you is like. So those folks that really resonate with your style and your approach and, and how, you, um, how you think about and work on these problems and, and educate around them, they're gonna naturally gravitate towards what you're doing. And then you can share your coaching and consulting as a natural next step. Um, so maybe you want to go with a format that has a little bit more teaching and coaching and guiding in it um, in, the, in the actual uh, podcast episodes. Uh, let's say you want to use the podcast to be positioned as a, a leading authority in the space and as a heavy or as a uh, networking tool, which by the way, podcasting is a great tool for, um, and I'm, I'm sure you've uh, noticed this yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, you know, it makes all the sense in the world for the podcast to be something that's more interview based. It's a great value first way to connect with folks um, and feature them and their expertise to your audience. And in the same way, you're creating value for your audience by extracting and, and creating a platform for people to share their best stuff. So um, it's an interesting process where um, now we start talking about the tangible pieces of what should my show be. It can all tie back into what's my objective and what's in the best interest of my audience. Um, so then you can kind of cross reference those two questions to think about those questions of, of what should my show be? So, um, you know, if we're, if we're going to get into some examples here, um, Michael Kitts is the financial advisor success podcast. His episodes are incredibly, uh, he does hour and a half episodes on average, um, because each one of his episodes he interviews a financial advisor who has gone on out on their own to create their own advisory firm. And he talks about their story, their process, the challenges they ran into, the successes they've had, um, you know, what they would share and teach and, and um, do to support other financial advisors who are starting to go out on their own or who have gone out on their own and they're in the process of building up their firm. Um, but his objective with the show is to educate advisors on what's actually involved in going out on your own, leaving like the broker dealer space and creating your own RIA or your own, you know, financial advisory firm. And I realize I'm getting into some industry, terms, <laughs> but the idea is the same, right? Like if, if you're depending on your objective, then the show format should be a natural reflection of what you're trying to do and what's in the best interest of your audience. And so for him, his episodes are really long because all of his other content on his site is really long. It's all really detailed and people, um, you know, oftentimes will take three or four different sessions to finish an episode. Um, but it matches his brand and it matches what people are trying to get from his content, which is detailed information of how other people have done it. Um, and so it, it dovetails really nicely in with what he's doing and what his audience wants. So, right. yeah, that, and this is where yeah. the fun part happens because there's no one size fits all. There's no, you know, if you're, if you do this, then you should do interviews. If you do this, then you should do coaching episodes or teaching episodes because, it comes down to your objective, your audience, and your brand. So the one nice thing um, as well that, that pieces in here is a lot of people uh, have the idea that if I start a show that is, that is mostly interviews, then it has to be an interview show forever. Or, you know, it has to be whatever I started it as. And I'm, I'm a big proponent of a podcast being an evolving medium as you learn more about the space, as you learn more about your topic, as you learn more about that industry and how you can 
support your audience better and what they're interested in. And you may learn over time, they get more value from the interviews. They get more value from the solo episodes. They may get more value from the episodes on these specific topics. So it's something that you can go into with the mindset of, this is my best guess to get started. And as we go, I'm going to ask our audience for feedback. I'm going to, um, essentially look to evolve, improve, and refine the show over time so that it's a more valuable and helpful resource. Um, and it serves and supports my objectives uh, while supporting the audience over time. So, I, and I would like to actually offer an example um, from this podcast, so, somewhat, uh, somewhat of an example that when the um, COVID-19 pandemic hit, you know, I had a lot of people reaching out to me saying, okay, I have information that could be valuable to people in this time. So I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to do some extra episodes. They're going to be shorter. You know, no sponsor information. We're just going to hit it. We're going to put it out there. I'm going to talk to these people. They can give that information. And then I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and publish. Like, you know, because usually I have this whole schedule that I go through. And then I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel so that people can get that information in whatever way that they need it. And that, that you know, I've been doing Beautiful. that podcast for years, pretty much this, I mean, I changed it once, but otherwise pretty much the same way. But that was situational. You know, mm -hmm. I, you have to be willing and, and open to hitting a need when it's a need. Exactly, exactly. So that's a beautiful example of, you know, the, the space shifts and things move like that's, that's what reality is, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on <laughs> yeah. depending on the day. But um, yeah, that's a perfect example where you know it, it became clear that there there was a bit of a gap there between um, you know what what people were wanting or hoping for, or you know what was there as as uh, an opportunity. Um, and what the show like had historical historically been, and that doesn't mean that it has to change forever. It can, right. you know, you can release shorter, um, you know, episode types for a while, and then go back to the previous format or whatever. So I think the big thing there is setting the expectation for listeners about what's happening and why. Yeah. Um, because a lot of, you know, if you did all, all interviews and then all of a sudden you started switching to just doing you on the, on the uh, episodes teaching, uh -huh. with no explanation, then people would be super confused and wondering what the heck's going on. Yeah. Um, but if you decide, you know, um, you've been getting a lot of feedback and, and um, you want to start testing out doing uh, solo teaching style episodes, and you let people know at the beginning of an episode exactly that and you kind of lay out awesome we're going to test this out see what kind of feedback it gets you know you can hit me up on twitter with your opinions or you can shoot me an email here um, if you've got feedback or specific topics you'd love for me to dive into that kind of thing um, and people people love it because that shows you are engaged as a content creator as a host as someone who is there advocating for them as a group um, versus the type of show that it got started, you know, in 2012, it was a interview show and it never changed. Um, even when, even when people wanted something different or even when there was other value to, to be had or opportunities to support people, but it still stayed, stayed exactly the same. It's a different, um, you know, it's, it's a different level of involvement um, yeah. and it's a different level of, of contribution, you know, as yeah. we're tying back to that word. Right. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So that's, that's, um, you know, and I realized that we've been, we've been talking a lot of, uh, of, you know, foundational strategy yeah. and principles, but boy, yeah. that's where, that's where all the real results come from, because then you can look at these different tactics and strategies and piece in the ones that work for you. Um, so, you know, if yeah. we're, if we're following these kind of foundational principles, uh, then the rest 
really comes down to, you know, finding the principle, the strategies that are working in your, in your uh, market vertical uh, for other shows like yours, um, but you're not straight copy and pasting it because you're clear on your objective and your audience with your mindset. Um, so it's actually unique to you and allows you to, to go out there with a contribution style podcast. So, and I have a question um, for you off of that. I, I, um, I, I totally get that, but what would you say to someone if they said, okay, but see, there are so many podcasts in my space. There are so many podcasts out there. Does it even make sense for me to go ahead and start? Yeah, so um, I love this because one of the the spaces that we've gotten the most traction with as a as a company is um, the financial advisory space. And there's a lot of finance podcasts out there. There's a lot of personal finance podcasts. There's a lot of podcasts around uh, preparing for retirement. There's a lot of podcasts around you know any any financial education type shows. There are already a hand, a small handful, if not a large handful, of podcasts that exist on those topics. But what we've found is that most folks, if they use podcasting as a lead nurturing tool, then the podcast creates this opportunity for you to individually educate and connect and build a relationship with your audience. And maybe it a lot of the content is very similar to other podcasts. Maybe, you know, some of the things that you're educating and sharing is, is similar, but there are folks who have connected with you in some way, or, you know, have come onto your email list, or they've seen you do a presentation somewhere. Um, and they, they're interested in what you do, but they're not ready to have a sales conversation or they're not ready to get started just yet. They're there to learn and they want to understand better. Um, if you can create that resource for your audience particularly and allow your audience to create uh, and build a connection with you over time, then that in and of itself is super valuable for you as the podcast host. And it's super valuable for them as the listener. Um, now, hmm. once you add to that, if you are, uh, getting specific with your audience and you help that specific audience, even that twist and flair on your content is going to be more helpful and uniquely uh, supportive to your audience than if you did a, a more general podcast. So, you know, if we go back to our, our audience examples here, if Katrina Ubell did a general weight loss podcast um, she probably wouldn't, it, it probably wouldn't be as highly received or, um, valued by the listenership. She might technically have a bigger audience, but she probably wouldn't generate nearly as many clients out of it because, um, mm -hmm. or, you yeah. know, be able to provide value because as a women physician herself, she knows the challenges that they face specifically with their jobs, with you know, high stress in the medical space. Um, and she knows what challenges that they're going through from a weight and food and, you know, body mentality standpoint, because she's been through it herself and she's building a network and a community of folks who are all in that same journey, who are all in that same process. Um, and I can say the same thing for Dennis Freedom Blueprint, you know, there, yeah. you, you could, teach real estate investing on a general scale. Um, but when you can identify with specifically the other folks that are in this community who listen to this podcast, then it draws you into the brand and creates much more of a personal connection, even though there are tons of real estate investing podcasts out there. I've, yeah. you know, created and, and managed a few myself. Um, and they all have their different flares of personalities and different, you know, approaches. Uh, but I think the big thing is if you can create a particular group um, and a particular uh, specific audience that your content is for and in support of, um, then it creates a much deeper relationship. And then you're not competing on a general broad scale. 
Right. Um, you are essentially becoming the mayor of a small town instead of just a citizen of a big city. Well, I love that. that. That's really great. And your credibility goes up so much because there's so much connectivity yeah. between, right, you and then yeah. the topic and then, and then the audience. Wow. 100 percent it's big fish in a small pond versus yeah. you know minnow in the ocean kind of yeah thing. right yeah right well ben i i really i love this information and we could talk so much longer except we can't because we're coming up on <laughs> <laughs> our time uh but I, I really think this was really helpful for the listeners and for anyone who's think has been thinking about um doing a podcast that this, this lays it out pretty well. And so will you let the listeners know how they can find you and, and what you got going on? Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you having me on. This is, this is great stuff. I love sharing and, and digging into this stuff. Um, the best way for folks to connect with me, a, a lot of the research and work that we've done, we've boiled down to a, a book and a, it's kind of a packet of resources. Um, and you can find that at thepodcastprinciples.com. I dive into the eight podcast principles and talk about how they get applied to different spaces. So um, that is the easy way to, um, you know, get some information and do some initial research yourself. And you can connect with me personally at cashflowpodcasting.com. That's our service site. Um, and that has all of my personal contact info there. So those are, those are the two routes. That's great. Thank you so much. And listeners, thank you. Um, you are who we are doing this for. And boy, if you have been wondering about doing a podcast, I think you have just been given an awful lot of information about how you can get started with that. And then go get the book and, and go to the site and get more information. So um, you, you're not... Um, nervous about doing it or not as nervous as, as maybe you would have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little nervous is okay. Yeah, a little. That's right. That's exactly. It shows yeah. your life. Right. Exactly. That's right. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I'd like to thank our sponsor, audible.com. Uh, get your free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth and check out all of the incredible um, audio content that they have uh, for your listening pleasure. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Pip, 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 Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl and afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl and afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so.